messed up What can figure it out That's how it chooses you Hello, Teresa. Hey, Claire. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Well, welcome everyone to It Chooses You Smidgen Edition. Smidge dish. Yes, the smidge dish this week is Teresa's jam. And Teresa really, really wants to tell you this. It's not a story exactly. It's just like I'm going to report to you the existence of a thing. <laughs> okay. That makes me very happy. That's really all it is. I mean, that's all I need to know. Have you heard in your travels around the internet of the 11 foot 8 inch bridge? No, I have not. Okay. I have known of the existence of the 11 foot 8 inch bridge for quite some time. Because at one point in the distant internet past, I came upon a video compilation of trucks that are taller than 11 foot 8 inches trying to drive under the 11 foot 8 inch bridge. <laughs> so the 11 foot 8 inch bridge is also known as the Norfolk Southern Gregson Street Overpass, which is like its official trainee city name. Okay. And where where is that? It's in Durham, North Carolina. Oh, okay. It is affectionately nicknamed the Can Opener. <laughs> or the Gregson Street guillotine. Ooh. <laughs> it was built in 1940 when it was completely up to spec. No problem only being 11 feet 8 inches tall in 1940. That's right. like twice the height of the average person in right. 1940. <laughs> Everything's gotten bigger since Everything's then. gotten bigger. Since 1973, bridge standard clearance is 14 feet. Right. And so only 33 years later, they're like, that's crazy low. We're going to need to make this a little bigger. But it's impossible to like do much to adjust the height of this bridge because of like you can't move a railroad track. It's not like a railroad car can go up and down a hill in less than like a mile and a half or something. So when the railroad track is in town, you're kind of limited in your options if you're going to change the environment that the track is in. Sure, sure. You, you may have seen these being on the East Coast at some point. These train overpasses are actually my favorite kind of civil engineering marvel to experience when I'm driving because when they're this old, they usually – the road dips down. So it's, it's either following a natural hollow or it's, it's just dug out. And the stone are these beautiful, huge granite blocks – and so when you're driving under one, it's cool and dark, and it feels like you've gone back in time. So I like the environment anyway. And then I saw this compilation of people destroying their property. <laughs> and it just makes me so happy. Okay. And they're, they're doing it on purpose, right? No, no. I wish they were doing it on purpose. No. So the reason the, the wider world knows about the Gregson Street overpass is that a, a nearby office worker who works in the neighborhood where this thing is, his name is Jürgen Hen. I believe he is of some Scandinavian extraction. In 2008, he set up a camera, I think in his office window, so that he could record collisions with the bridge. Because they were happening so frequently that it's like every, every few weeks he would hear, bang, and he would turn around and see the thing. And so he's like, I got to get this on tape. <laughs> so do they warn people about this? I assume there are signs. Oh, sure. There are many signs. I think they started with standard low clearance and the, the feet marked out. From there, they went to like a preliminary bar that hangs from two poles, like 10 feet out from the bridge, and a big sign that says, if your truck hits this bar, you're going to get stuck under the bridge. <laughs> didn't didn't make an appreciable impact in the number of accidents happening at this bridge site. From there, they actually installed a stoplight that makes people stop before they go under with like a big flashing sign that says, like if the sensors there notice that you're truck is too tall, it will say, overheight vehicles must turn, which also has made no appreciable difference oh in the number goodness. of accidents happening. <laughs> Come on, people. 
as of October of last year, like October 2020, he's recorded over 150 collisions with the bridge. <laughs> and his YouTube channel, like where he plays these recordings, has 150,000 subscribers. <laughs> because I'm not alone in wanting to watch people flagrantly disregard their own safety and ignore all attempts to set them back on the right path. Like, Maybe, maybe think twice about driving under this very tiny bridge in your giant budget truck. No, no, I'm, I refuse to think twice. I'm going for it. And then th it's called the can opener because the bridge catches the top corner of the truck and just peels the roof off as it drives by. Oh my goodness. So folks, Claire and I spent a few minutes before we started recording this episode, like trying to set up a screen sharing thing so that I could so she can, she and I could watch these things at the same time and I could get her like real time take and it didn't work because we don't, we barely understand technology enough to have a podcast. So we couldn't make that happen in the short amount of time we have. But as I think about it, I'm actually glad that it didn't work because we talked last year during the baseball episode about how uncomfortable you feel when you think you have to have the emotional experience someone is expecting <laughs> you to have. And, and I remember asking you, did you think I would just be like looking over at you every 10 <laughs> seconds to see if you had like a stupid fucking smile plastered on your face because you decided you loved baseball so much? And you're like, yes, I fully expected <laughs> you to do that. And I tried not to be offended because I would like to think I would never do it. I fully admit that has nothing to do with the reality of who you are. That's just my own neurosis. <laughs> oh, but it does. Because I definitely would have been watching your face to see how you reacted to these trucks. <laughs> So it's it's best all around that it didn't work out. But but that's my smidgen this week. And that's really I just want to talk about how amazing it is to watch people refuse to respond to offers of help and information over and over and over again. I'm totally into it. I want to know, is it that we do that in our own lives? And <laughs> so we like to feel superior in the moment seeing other people do it in this really obvious aggressive way. <laughs> oh, well, I would never do that. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I, I think, and I'm not sure because I haven't done stats on it. I'm not gonna, and I'm not gonna. So if you expect stats, you're in the wrong place. But I, I think it's possible to look at the kind of trucks that get caught. And it seems to me that a large proportion of them are rentals, which mm. means they're driven by people who are not used to driving giant trucks. Occasionally, you'll see like a professional semi truck drivers kind of truck. You'll see that. And that's shocking. That bridge has got to be famous among like professional drivers, you know? Yes. They, they know not to go there. Well, there's something apparently in like the city admin around these kinds of places. And I, I went a little too far down that road. And there's nothing interesting to report, everybody. So you don't need to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> get your finger off the clicker. Yeah. It's good. Don't, don't look this up. It's not worth it. We are here to inform you. Yeah. Do not do that research. Don't. It's right here for you. Just wait. So apparently there's a thing that you can do which tells um, it, Teamsters, essentially, people who are responsible for shipping and receiving of all of the goods that we use on a daily basis, right? Many of them are truck drivers. That, I believe, is the union that if a truck driver is a union up truck driver, they would be a teamster. So there are like places you can disseminate information like big trucks can't go on this street in a town. Like you just don't drive on it. That it's off limits to you, right? And so they've done that for the street, except that local truck drivers who know the area know that before you get to the bridge, you can actually turn off onto another road that might be use useful and worthwhile for your deliveries that is actually of a fine height for you to drive a giant truck on. And so people who know the area end up going toward the bridge and then turning off. And maybe people who don't know the area say, oh, well, it seems like this road's okay for trucks. There's another truck on it. And then they try and go under the bridge. So despite all the warnings that are out there, flashing lights and signs of various colors and a giant metal bar literally hanging in space in front of the bridge. I also, that bar has had to have been replaced at least once because oh, yeah. so many people hit it. <laughs> oh yeah. So despite all of these warnings, people are still like, no, no, I'm just going to drive under this bridge. And I can't decide if it's like bloody minded. I know how 
tall my truck is and I'm fine. Or if it's really just people are busy and not paying attention and then they destroy their trucks. Once again, we come to is, is it optimism or stupidity? <laughs> There's a fine line. Who knows? Who knows? You know what? It reminds me a little bit about the Ever Given, the ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. <gasps> I don't know that. No. Okay. So this happened just a week ago. Oh, my God. It's been a couple weeks when this episode comes out, but the, there's a big cargo ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal <laughs> for days. Oh, God. And all of the attempts to, you know, there are all these pictures of this giant ship and then this teeny tiny bulldozer with like one bucket that's like trying to push it, you know. <laughs> I've seen that image. I just didn't bother to look for the context. Okay. People are obsessed with it. And there's something similar, right? Which is... a non-lethal disaster, you know, like real inconvenience, real problem that potentially could have been avoided. But we become fascinated with these things because they make us feel like we're in control of our own lives. Or at least like I would never drive a giant truck under a tiny bridge. I can't see myself doing that. But that just might speak to my level of paranoia more than anything. Anyway, I love this bridge. This this is basically just a love letter to the Gregson Street overpass because it makes me so happy. And in in all of this time, the bridge itself has never suffered any damage. That's fantastic. Of course not. It's just like, you think, you think that hurts me? I'm made of stone and steel and you're made of plywood and aluminum. It's <laughs> not going to end well for you. <laughs> can you imagine if that bridge had a diary? <laughs> like... <laughs> Well, another moron today. I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, life is good. They seemed very upset, though. I felt bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> so in a in an attempt to save people from themselves, which is seems to be the role of government at all levels, they have tried to dig out the road and, and have succeeded. So they dug out the road beneath it, making the clearance sort of two feet more than 11 foot eight. So they've, they've done some work on it. It's still far below the 14 foot clearance, which is now standard. Oh, don't they know they're ruining a YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not though, because people still hit it. And it doesn't matter really if it's a, for the story, it doesn't matter if it's 11 foot eight or 13 foot six, right? It's still a bunch of trucks hitting a bridge one after another. What's the name of that YouTube channel again? 11 foot eight. So his website is, it's a uh, Jurgen Hen is the guy who set up the video camera and his website is 11 foot eight.com. And the YouTube channel is not called that. But if you look up 11 foot eight, his channel will come up. You'll see it. That's great. It's the most fun. And really you can, you can experience the last 12 years of the life of this bridge with these accidents in about 15 minutes. So it's totally <laughs> worthwhile. It doesn't take much time and is purely delightful. What a perfect topic for a smidgen, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure sharing it with you all. I hope you go look it up. It's amazing. Hey, join us next time for our long episode and we will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Yes, please like and download episodes if you like us. Yay. Thanks and goodbye. Bye-bye. Testing? Great. Thank you for listening to It Chooses You. Your hosts are Teresa Sparks and Claire Patton. Our theme song is by Bobby Dart. If you'd like to get in touch with us, drop us an email at itchoosesyoupodcast at gmail.com. <laughs>